Good. So this post is going to be quite an honest and revealing one about something that I deal with health-wise. Um, I started doing some honest um, health posts on the Huffington Post and I was kind of blown away from the reaction that I got that it helped people to know that other people were going through what they were going through, that they were reading something that they could relate to. It kind of opened up a new conversation. I met some great people through it who I still get emails from and we share advice and talk about our issues together. So I thought I'd talk about an issue I haven't spoken about yet and that is... Uh, last year at Download Festival I was so tired I found on the sofas in the guest bar and made a little bed behind it and slept there for about an hour while my friends just, you know, did what normal people do and were having drinks and chatting and having fun. They were just keeping watch so no one um, stole any of my stuff or, you know, peed on me or anything like that. So I'm really fun to be around, so you can tell, can't you? Another fact, I managed to sleep through Motorhead playing at Sonosphere. Just completely zonked out in the grass. If I can sleep through Motorhead, I think that says a lot. And I wasn't even drunk. The most common thing I get is, um, why are you so tired? You haven't done anything today. But it doesn't work like that. I can sleep all through the night. I could have not done anything yesterday and I can still be exhausted. You find that sleep actually doesn't seem to improve your condition at all. You don't wake up energised and fresh like other people might do. You wake up feeling sluggish. And just... I guess this sound sums it up. Um, I've never been the most robust of people you know, I was always getting ill as a child, whether it just be tonsillitis or just the person that would always catch the viruses or the colds or whatever. Um, and when I got to sixth form, when everyone in their free periods was going, I don't know, road trips or going to do some sport or go shopping, I'd quite often have a little snooze in the common room um, till the next lesson. But I didn't really think much of it then. I just thought, oh, I haven't got enough sleep, maybe. And then at uni, year one, um, was it year one or two? Anyway, um, I caught glandular fever, which was awful. If any of you have had that before, you will know how bad that is. Oh, God. Um, one of my friends actually came to visit me and she came into the room and actually screamed because I looked that bad. Check out this picture. It took quite a few months to recover. Well, I say it took quite a few months. I don't think I've ever fully recovered. I've been left with ME or chronic fatigue syndrome, um, which means that I'm pretty much always lethargic, always tired, lacking in energy. Um, and it's really affected all aspects of my life. Now, I know I'm very lucky there are some people who have a terrible case of it that means that they're bed bound for years, they can never go to work, they can't have relationships, all this sort of thing. Um, and mine isn't that bad, but it's at that stage where it has a considerable effect on, as I said, my career, relationships and life. And because it's not at a stage where it's so obvious or visible, kind of makes it less easy for people to understand it. Um, still something I have to explain all the time, even to my loved ones who know that I've got it and know what it is. It's already been one of the prime reasons one of my past relationships ended, because he just got so fed up of me always being tired. Whether it be, I'm too tired to go to your friend's birthday party. I'm too tired to go to the family meal. Or I'm too tired, well, to do anything, basically. And, you know, they can be understanding to a point. But after a while, they just get fed up with it. And then they start to kind of resent you for it. Even though they know it's not your fault. They say things like, stop being so lazy. Even though they know it's not your fault it just starts to come out.
And obviously, when it comes to the romantic side of relationships, you're often too tired to um, get romantic. Obviously, that then affects their self-esteem. They start to question whether you still find them attractive, and then it spirals into something else entirely. Um, and then coming with that is the guilt feeling that you're letting people down. Um, the fact that you can't make them happy because you lack so much energy then makes you feel worse and then it's a spiral. Interesting fact, I once fell asleep during a first date. Luckily the guy found it endearing, but I mean this is not the way to go about things. It just, I would not recommend it, I was lucky on this occasion. In terms of the illness, it's not just, you know, feeling tired once in a while. There's so many more things that come with it. When I, when I had a full-time job, I'd often black out and I'd faint or keel over. Um, and that, that's embarrassing. You don't want to be doing that in front of people. And you don't want people to think that you can't handle what, you do, what you're doing because you've still got that drive and that ambition, but your body won't let you achieve the things you want to achieve, no matter how hard you try. I had to give up like my dream jobs because of it, and that's obviously quite soul-destroying. Now, other th ways it affects you is you get kind of bit just hazy like you can't concentrate on things some days and you can't I don't know you just it's just a bit jumbly in there you end up doing silly things now and again because of it like dappy things I've got constantly achy joints my hip bones and my lower back in particular are really sore and I just feel generally tender on my body. Well, people think I'm just being, again, lazy or a diva when I ask people to hold my bag or something, but my arms feel extremely weak and I find it really hard to do things with my arms quite often, which makes me look a bit pathetic and needy, but it's just a fact. And obviously because I'm stubborn, sometimes I, I try and, you know, do it without help. Um, but in the end you just feel so rotten the next day, it's really not worth it. You've just got to give in and just accept help. Another thing which doesn't help matters is that people with ME and chronic fatigue syndrome often suffer with uh, sleep problems like insomnia, which is something I had for many years. And it's just very lonely being awake in the dark hours and just not having anyone to talk to or just being alone with your thoughts it makes you dwell on things a bit more being awake at night time um, and obviously it doesn't help in terms of the tiredness factor you wake up even worse you have bags like this you just look disgraceful my friends who know me really well now can actually see when I'm starting to go into one of my bad phases, apparently my face changes. They can literally see the energy getting zapped from my face. There's also things like sweating that comes with it. Apparently you sweat more. I've always been quite a sweaty Betty anyway, so I don't know whether it's down to that or not. But And obviously you get kind of irritable bowel syndrome type thing, which is another story that we'll go into on another vlog, because that is a, well, I've got lots to say about that. In my career, networking is so vitally important to get the jobs that you want, to meet the people that, you know, will lead to the opportunities. And I'm always the person that will leave the party early or not go to the after party or not do those follow-up coffees with someone you've met at a previous event because I'm just too tired. I can't hack the train journey into town and then the meeting and then the journey back. It's, it's too much for me and I can see all these opportunities come up and see that, that that person that's always at the after parties, that's always, you know, 
chatting and mingling and being social is the one that's getting getting all the things that I want and I can't do anything about that. It's funny, this is some of my posts about say bad skin and stuff, family and friends have been very encouraging of me posting saying that's great, you know, be talk about it, that's gotta be a good thing, but when it comes to this, the the instant reaction is, are you sure you want to do that? Because I think it could harm my future career if employees see it and they think that I won't be able to do the work stuff, which sadly could be the case that they might think that. But I'm someone that I'm very conscientious, like I will always do my best and I try to stick to all kind of things on my work calendar that I can. It's only in extreme cases when I literally cannot do it that I will cancel and that is very rare. I will do it and then just deal with the consequences the next day which will be that I hurt all over, that I feel shattered and just need to be in bed for the day or whatever. But I guess this video is also kind of a shout out to my friends because I don't see them as much as I'd like because I'm often just too tired and I don't have the energy to be that effervescent, you know, jolly person that they meet up with and to, you know, have conversations and be in... Oh. See, even doing this vlog, I'm finding it hard to put words together today because I'm so tired. I just... I hear people talk about other people and say how they think that they're... that someone's a bad friend because they haven't seen them for ages or they haven't made an effort to do something or other. And I just want to say that maybe consider that there's something else going on. Okay, there are some bad friends out there that just don't make the effort, but there are some people that are coping with other things that they necessarily don't talk about openly with you, but would love to spend more time with you, but there's a reason they can't do it. And it frustrates me and I feel guilty that I'm not as good a friend as I used to be or would like to be. But please know that I do care. I'm not, it's not me being lazy. It's not me saying I can't be bothered. It's my body not allowing me to do it. Hopefully one day this will go and then I can be that great friend to you again and have the career that I've wanted and be the perfect girlfriend. But for now I can just I can only do what I can do. I hate it when you feel like you're coming off rude to someone, that you know you're not making an effort to be chatty. But sometimes, you know, in those social situations where it involves a lot of meeting new people and conversing and doing, you know, the same chat. You know, what do you do? Where are you from? Blah blah. blah. It's just it's extremely draining. And if I'm already there with no energy that that is just exhausting and I'm scared that people think oh she's a bit off she's a bit rude when really I'm just struggling to stay awake and stay upright and on my feet so please if I ever seem distant or over it I'm not being rude and I'm not being a diva and I'm not being arrogant or whatever I'm literally just exhausted Another horrible thing is when you have one of your uh, dizzy spells or blackouts or or fainting moments when you're in a public place and you, and you're on your own. I collapsed in an Apple store on Oxford Street. Luckily, there was a lovely guy there who looked after me. We're now Facebook friends. Hi, Ben. Um, but you just worry that at some point you are going to be on your own and there's not going to be anyone around to help you. So that's that's scary. Um, I had a quite a bad blackout yesterday where I literally couldn't see anything for, I don't know, it must have been about 30 seconds. And you just think, if I was doing something, oh, I, dread to, I, I don't even want to go there, but it's just a bit worrying. I guess because I'm someone that does a lot of my work on camera as well, 
I do worry that people look at me and think, God, she needs to get some rest. She looks haggard, and some days I really do look haggard. Either I've been so tired, I, I didn't find the time to, you know, shower, do my hair properly and groom myself, or I just haven't slept for days and my bags are pretty much down here. Another frustrating thing is, when you're trying to work out what's wrong with you, which I have been for 10 years and it's, I'm still on the process. Um, it's gonna be ongoing, I imagine, for still a few more years. But anyway, we're starting to make progress. But I would see doctors for many years and talk about you know, my energy levels and how tired I am and how painful I am and the dizzy spells and the blackouts and all that sort of stuff. And some doctors will be responsive and helpful and you know, try and give you tips, but some will be very dismissive, make you feel like you're wasting their time, and they pretty much just say, deal with it, you know, it's your problem, you've just got to adapt to it, and it feels very cold, very isolating, and you they make you feel a bit silly. Lucky, when you find a good doctor, they are sympathetic, they understand and they try and give you ideas of different routes you can try which are often alternative routes um, but what I want to say is keep going till you find that doctor that one will listen to you two will be sympathetic and three will help guide you and maybe point you in directions of things that you can try or people you can talk to or um, at least check that there's nothing else going on that might be more suspect I'm really hoping that people watching this that also have chronic fatigue syndrome or ME can um, give me some tips, anything that they've tried that helps them. Um, how anyone that's got better that doesn't suffer from it anymore and how many years it took for that to happen. Um, whether there's any sort of benefits that we can go on that help us in terms of money because when I'm to tired to work I do worry about how I'm ever gonna fund my life and pay for rent and stuff like that so any tips on that would be really appreciated um, I really hope you don't look at this blog as me being you know oh poor me pity me it's not about that it's me just wanting people to understand it more and maybe make some friends that also deal with this so I can talk to someone that understands um, and I just think it's good that people are open and start discussions about these things because um, that can only help. So um, thanks for watching. I hope I didn't ramble too much. Um, I'll be back with a more positive blog soon.